So this is a look at the Ioptron HEM15 strain wave mount. It's a hybrid model. So it's strain wave in the right ascension and it is a belt driven in the declination. And uh, it, it works really fabulously, uh, I have to say. Uh, if I was to rate it on a, a scale of one to 10, I would definitely give it an eight out of 10. Um, I give it an eight out of 10 for two particular reasons, and I'll get to those later on in the video here. But suffice to say that um, this mount has performed excellent, really well. Um, I've been using it now since last July of 2023 and I've had it out a number of times in the field and in my backyard, and it has really, really performed well. It's very lightweight. It only weighs five and a half pounds, uh, not, very, not very heavy at all, and um, it's highly portable, which is great, easy. I was able to pick this up with the scope attached and just carry it out, uh, set it up, no problems at all. Now, um, I did say that it was hybrid, mount and uh, so strain wave in the uh, in the right ascension uh, end of it. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with strain wave mounts, the strain wave gear mechanism also known as a harmonic drive provides high precision in movement due to its unique design involving very little backlash. This allows for smoother and more accurate tracking of celestial objects as they move through the night sky or even slight inaccuracies can lead to blurred or star trailed images. The strain wave gear systems are known for their compactness, like this little guy is, and um, their efficiency too, which translates into a more portable and less bulky equatorial mount. This is really beneficial for uh, astrophotographers that go out into the field, go to dark sites, and need to set up their equipment. The reduced weight and size don't compromise the mount's stability and capacity to hold substantial telescope setups. I was using the uh, Starfield 60Q uh, uh, refractor setup there without a counterweight uh, with this mount, no counterweight at all. It does have uh, the option to uh, add a counterweight if you want one right there. You can add the counterweight bar on and put a counterweight on it, but um, it's not necessary uh, up to 18 pounds. It has on it, on the back here, it has a number of different ports on the back. It has a port for the iPolar. It has a port for the DC uh, power in. It has a uh, port for the hand controller and it has uh, an ST4 guiding port as well. And on top here, it's got a uh, 12 volt DC output capability too. So that could be useful. And I guess I should add that the strain wave gear system, it minimizes the number of moving parts, leading to a system that's more robust and requires less maintenance over time. So I had said earlier that I give it an eight out of 10, and this is the reason I give it an eight out of 10. It works really well. The mount really does work fantastic. I got excellent uh, tracking with it. It slews fast and it can definitely hold um, a, a, a substantial payload without a counterweight on it. Um, the two drawbacks that I came across were, one, the mechanisms for adjusting for polar alignment, uh, the alt-as adjustments on it. Um, there's a lot of play in them, and it makes it a little difficult to try and get accurate polar alignment. Um, in my case, I was getting good polar alignment. I wasn't getting excellent polar alignment, but it, it, this made it a little challenging. There's a lot of play in these um, mechanisms here that uh, are used for adjusting the mount to, uh, to align it, uh, polar align it. Um, so that was one little drawback. Um, the other issue that I had was it comes with a hand controller and that's great, no, no worries there. But um, for me, I haven't used a hand controller with my mount in many, many years. Now, I can see the need for using a hand controller if you're in the field and, and you know, you might need one. Um, but I would have preferred that they had had an option here that you could run the cable from the mount directly to the computer. Um, instead, you have to run the hand controller. You have to plug the hand controller into the mount, and then a cable from the hand controller goes to the computer. So it's like a, an extra cable there that's not needed, really. Um, so that's one thing that I, I would like to see uh, changed. You can get around it by using the Wi-Fi hotspot that this has ability to create. Um, so you don't necessarily need that. You don't, well, you don't need that cable plugged into your computer if you're using the Wi-Fi hotspot. But in my case, 
in order to access the Wi-Fi hotspot, I had to lose my internet connection on the laptop that was sitting outside along with this gear. And that meant I couldn't remote into it from uh, inside the house remotely. So um, that was a bit of a drawback. So I had to use the cable. And I just found that uh, having this hand controller clunking around was um, a little in a little annoying actually and inconvenient but that's something that maybe Ioptron can work on and, and fix um, i'm sure it can't be too hard to put a port on this mount that goes directly to the computer so that you don't have to use this hand controller if you don't want to so overall this is a really fantastic mount um, i highly recommend it price point on it um maybe a little high i think if it was a couple hundred two or three hundred dollars less it would probably be better placed uh for pricing to the uh, hands of those that are probably going to be interested in it you know uh, you can't beat the portability it really is quite extraordinary so i almost forgot and i want to just put this at the end of the video this mount here comes with the eye polar uh, for polar alignment so you can use uh, ioptron's eye polar to uh, polar align the mount if you want um, i didn't use it myself i was actually using sharpcat pro to do the uh, polar aligning and uh, that worked uh, that worked pretty good. Um, you may uh, get a little more accurate using the polar, the eye polar, than uh, you do uh, with sharp cap. But sharp cap works pretty pretty darn good. So I was fairly happy with the results that I got. And I should also point out that uh, on the unit you've got your uh, latitude adjustment here that uh, goes from uh, need my glasses. Um, it goes from fifteen to 65 degrees yeah so it goes from 15 to 65 degrees um, in latitude and that adjustment is right there you can make it I've got mine set for my latitude as a bubble level on it um, the tripod uh, that is optional uh, also has a bubble level on it um, they actually sent me the the carbon fiber uh, uh, tripod that uh, is optional for this and uh, that worked really well that was uh, nice and sturdy um, overall, like I said, a really good mount, and I've been really pleased with it. A couple drawbacks with regards to the hand controller and the cable for the computer um, and the adjustments for the uh, Altaz in polar aligning being a little, uh, little, little too much play. But other than that, I mean, it's a really fantastic mount, and your investment in this would be well worth it. It's a great little mount that works really well, very portable, high precision, and uh, just fantastic overall. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks very much for tuning in. Really appreciate the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And any questions or comments, leave them below. We'll see you again real soon. Take care, guys. Clear skies.